So that promotes the fact that like the coarse grid iterations are almost free in 3D promotes the use of this so-called W cycle. Okay. In 1D it doesn't it, it makes most sense to perform the V cycle as we did before. So this looks like a V. The W cycle it looks pretty complicated because on every so basically it replicates this by a factor of two and then on every V it replicates this by a factor of two, right? So so that looks like that's what makes it looks like a W. But if you think of in the code, this is very easy to do. If I want to perform a W cycle, what do I do? The only thing I need to do is that. Okay. So that would be a W cycle. I'm performing two multi-grid iterations when I'm going to a cause a grid. Right? So this is at the finest grid, I'm going to the coarser level, and this is one call to this multi-grid. This is my second call. And it is also customary to uh so yeah, so so this is uh so what what I was doing is this S is performed uh, twice, one pre-smoothing, one post-smoothing in the in the cost grid. But like uh it doesn't make much difference. So so this would be one call, the second call to the second finest grid. And when I'm in a multi-grid call of the second finest grid, I'm also making one call and two call to the uh, third finest grid. And so is here. So this is a hierarchical, almost like a fractal uh, structure I'm, I'm calling here. And in the code, uh, this is what I would be doing if I want to use mul uh, a W cycle multi grid. If you use W cycle multi grid, uh, well, I'll just uh, do the same thing here. The the result you wouldn't expect to be a lot more different from just the V cycle. It's probably a little bit better, but remember the finest gr uh, the the coarse grid solution is almost free, right? And uh, in, in 1D, that let's let's take a look at the cost analysis of the W cycle. So in 1D, it doesn't make that much sense to do the W cycle multi grid as I as I just uh, did before, because the cost, okay, of uh, the cost of N grid point, if I keep doing this, um, would be would be proportional to n plus 2 times the cost. So, so this is the iterations I perform on this grid. 2 times the, not cost, cost of the cost of grid, right? And if the cost of this, uh, if I perform that iteratively, that will be 2 times n over 2 plus 2 times the cost of n over 4, right? Uh, oh, so I, I shouldn't uh, be... Yeah, right, so okay. Um, if, I, if I keep doing this, this will be n plus n plus n plus etc. So the, how many, however many levels you have in the multigrid, the cost is going to be proportional to the number of levels instead of bounded by a factor of 2. But starting from 2D, this makes a lot more sense. Because in 2D, the cost of n uh, total grid points is equal to n plus 2 times the cost of, of n over 4. Right? Which doing this iteratively is going to be the cost of uh, 2 times n over 4 plus 2 times the cost of n over 16. And uh, if you expand this, it'll be n plus half n plus a fourth n, etc. So it's the same as our one-dimensional v-cycle cost. This is less or equal to, I mean, strictly less than 2n, right? So doing a multi-grid cycle in 2D, 
is you're going to get a cost that is bounded by twice the cost of the fine grade operation. And in 3D, it makes a lot of sense to do the multi grade because the cost of N is going to be N plus 2 times N divided by 8, then plus 2 times N divided by 16 then, uh, no, not 16, 64 then, plus etc. So if you do the math, it'll be the same series as the two-dimensional V-cycle. This is going to be strictly less than 4 over 3 times N. Right? So even doing the W-cycle in 3D, if you're solving a 3D problem, wouldn't be much more expensive than only performing the finest grade iteration. This is because in 3D every coarser grid is going to have eight times fewer operations. Right, so the cost goes down very very quickly. It's interesting to do a 4D problem and it's even cheaper. As you can imagine. Yes, this is uh, uh, the reason they put gamma here. I copied this from uh, Another uh, lecture notes is because they basically have a, have a loop here. So for gamma goes from one to two, you do that, right? So that's that's the gamma you would be having uh, <laughs> in, in the plot. So you are iterating here, and uh, uh, this is what the gamma shows. All right, so it's a. Uh, yeah, any other questions? And you can do a super W cycle if you make gamma goes from 1 to 3, for example. Uh, I don't see anybody doing that, in fact, but like, you can probably do that. Okay, uh, but I do see a lot of people doing this. So this is what people call a full multigrid. It is it is motivated by the fact that an initial guess is actually pretty important for the convergence of many problems. And for linear problems, it's uh, relatively easy to, it's not that difficult to just to use a zero initial guess, and especially for nonlinear problems, it's, it's very important to have a good initial guess. So, so what, this, what this does is that Instead of starting from the finest grid, you start from the coarsest grid. And on the coarsest grid, you don't start solving the error equation because you don't have the residual from the fine grid. You start by solving the equation, the partial differential equation itself on the coarsest grid. And then you perform a, a interpolation. They call prolong so, so restriction and prolongation is the technical terminology uh, they use in multigrid representing these two interpolations. So prolongation is interpolating from cost, interpolating the solution from cost to fine grid. Restriction is interpolating the residual from fine to cost grid. Right? This is always uh, what you'll be doing. So in so prolongation interpolate the solution from the cost to fine grid and that solution is used as an initial guess for the final grid. So this is then performing one V cycle on the second causes grid. And that solution is going to be used as the initial guess. The interpolated solution is then used as the initial guess for the third causes grid. And then performing one iteration on the causes grid, uh, you would get an initial guess for the finest grid. Also, you don't have to do exactly one V cycle uh, before you jump to the final grid. So this is a customary of what people have been using uh, for for multigrid, and uh, uh, you start solving, for example, a thirteen by seven problem, performing one, uh, one, two, three, four, five multigrid cycles, and use that as an initial condition for the slightly finer grid, and you perform a few iterations, few multigrid cycles on the second cost cost grid. Uh, as an initial condition for the next fine grid. So here every point is one multi-grid cycle. 
and uh, uh, basically because especially for 3D problems the these causes these cost grid iterations are almost free for you right so so it's uh, uh, you can converge these cost grid solutions to pretty small residual and use that as an initial guess for the final grid yes why does the residual norm goes back up as you start a final grid solution what do you think any uh, any people take a guess huh interpolation exactly because at here this is the res this residual is different from this residual this residual is the residual of a different equation of the equation on the cost grid while this residual is the residual of a finer grid equation I mean, if you look at this this is at the same point so this is the same solution just interpolated on the, to the finer grid but I'm evaluating the solution on a different mesh on a different equation different discretization 